Good afternoon from Super Bowl in Canton, Michigan. We are getting started with our second round of match play here this week at the PWBA Detroit Open. We've got eight games left of round robin match play to determine who our top four will be for the stepladder finals tonight at 6.30 p.m. Eastern time. Bold eight games this morning of round robin match play. And like I said, we've got eight more to go. Stephanie Johnson is your tournament leader at plus 366. Stephanie, six and two in her matches this morning. Kelly Kulik currently ranked number two at plus 302. Josie Ernest, number three at plus 214. And Tania Falbo is fourth. She is at plus 171. So let's run through how far back some of the other players are from fourth place. Liz Johnson and Jackie Reese are tied, both 20 pins out. Missy Parkin, 28 back. Shannon O'Keefe, 60. Shannon Plahowski, 90. Jody Wessner, 113. Brianna Caldwell, 128, and everybody else is about 160 back of fourth place with eight to go. We've seen the importance of the match play bonus pins throughout the day today with such a low scoring pace on this 35-foot flat pattern. Those big, those 30 bonus spins are big each game. Stephanie Johnson, six and two, is a pretty fantastic record for eight games of round robin match play. Josie Ernest also went six and two, which is a big reason why she is currently in third place. And only four players averaging better than 200 in the tournament this week, and that would be her top four. Highest average in the field is actually Kelly Kulik at 209.85. Stephanie Johnson is at 209.3. Tania Falbo, 204.05. And Josie Ernest at 201.7. Our matchups here in this first game of round two, Heather Melvin against Lindsay Boomershine. Stephanie, jo sorry, and Diana Zavialova against Sarah Loker. Like uh, Diana wasn't going to get out of the ball, so she stopped. Zavialova would have to make a big run for this afternoon to make the show. She's currently 163 pins back of fourth place. Heather Melvin in a similar situation. She's 159 pins back and would need a big tally in these eight games to make it.
you can kind of see by watching just a few shots here to start this game how tough the lanes are. There is not much room. It's not like your house shot that you bowl league on where you can stand at the big dot and pitch the ball right and watch it come back to the pocket. It doesn't work that way on this pattern. You have to be very accurate, very consistent in order to sco score well. And I can tell you that whoever wins this week certainly will have earned it because it has been a really difficult week in terms of the scoring pace. Sarah Loker looking to take the lead with a strike. And goes a little high and four nines instead. That four pin almost went over a couple of times, but it stays up. pin lead from Melvin. She goes through the face and leaves the baby split. Thank you. 
First game of our second round of match play here in Detroit. Sarah Loker leading by three against Diana Zavialova. And Heather Melvin up by, well, actually now down by two thanks to that open. Diana down by three, seventh frame, crossing over for the Brooklyn strike. Certainly have seen quite a few Brooklyn strikes this week. Boomer Shine, opposite end of the spectrum for her as she is unable to hit the head pin. Seen a lot of that this week as well. Easy to go Brooklyn, easy to miss the head pin right. Not as easy to hit the pocket. We are all tied up between Melvin and Boomershine this game. Couple of close games here in game one. Sarah Loker with a six count on the spare last frame. Costs her the lead, she now trails by a pin. As we start the eighth frame in that match, she leaves the four pin.
Diana with a big double to take the lead. Actually, she had the lead to increase the lead to 12. Melvin goes through the face and leaves the baby split. 3-10. So she falls behind by a couple of pins. Open frame. Shine looking to secure the win here in the ninth and the tenth frames. Gets nine. And she needs 189 to shut out Heather Melvin. So to spare here, she can go nine spare strike in the tenth for the shutout. frame for Sarah Loker. So looks like she's going to lose this game against Diana. That'll be enough to secure the win for Boomershine. Closing out our first game of this round. Boomershine and Savialova picking up the wins. Oh. 
She stays so big. All right, so game two underway. Sarah Loker against Brianna Caldwell and Lindsay Boomershine against our, our top bowlers in the field. 
Stephanie Johnson. Let's see if Stephanie is still in the lead. And it looks like she is at plus 342. Even though she lost her first game and shot 176, Kelly Kulik lost with a 157. So you've got Stephanie Johnson at 342 over. Kelly Kulik plus 259. Josie Ernest at plus 231. And Jackie Reese at plus 203. Liz Johnson, five back of fourth place. Tania Falbo, excuse me, Tania Falbo, 30 back. Missy Parkin is 69 pins behind fourth place. Caldwell, 121 back. Pluhowski, 129. O'Keefe, 131. Wessner, 144. It was a pretty lousy first game for a lot of the bowlers in the field, this, this opening game of round two match play. I think there are only three games above 200 in the field. And it's pretty low. Your top three bowlers, 176, 157, and 187. So pretty slow start for our, at the top of our standings. And that just uh, helps to make things even a little bit closer with seven games to go. Stephanie trips out the 4-9 for the strike.
Moving along here, game number two of our second round of match play. We'll both seven games in this round, and then the final game will be a position round. Step ladder finals coming up tonight, 6.30 p.m. Eastern time. That's when we get started this week. Kind of a slow start in both matches. Not a lot of strikes being thrown. It's been the case for most of the last two days on this 35-foot flat pattern. Stephanie Johnson coming into the picture right now. Fifth frame, a high flush strike for Johnson. Puts her up by five, with half a game to go. Caldwell leads Sarah Loker by 10. Double for Stephanie, pushes her lead to 15.
Shine goes high, leaves the three six ten. The deficit continues to grow against Johnson. Johnson up, working on three in a row. And comes up a little light, leaves the double wood. Stephanie up by 27. Two and a half frames to go. Caldwell, seventh frame. Ball checked up on her. Went high left to 3-6. She still has the lead though by 21. Shine. She's not had a strike yet this game. Leaves the baby split. for ran on that one leaves the four pin and a nice baby split conversion for boomer shot
Boomer Shine down 29 with two frames to go. Lindsay pretty, pretty far back in the standings from fourth. Highly unlikely she would be able to make a run at fourth place to make the show. So I'm sure she will keep plugging away and hope to maybe put up some big games to get there, but it does not look promising. Six games to go for Lindsay Boomershine. Sarah can pull to within 10 with a strike here for a double. Instead, the opposite happens and she leaves the 4-6 split. Give a shout out to our major ball sponsors on the PWBA Tour this season, 900 Global, Hammer, Brunswick, Roto Grip, Columbia 300, and Storm all stepping up to the plate and supporting the PWBA Tour in the biggest way possible. Also, a lot of other apparel and accessory companies as well. And you can find the full list at pwba.com. Click on tournaments and go to product registration. You'll see the list of companies that have stepped up to sponsor the tour this season. It looks like Stephanie Johnson going to be over 200 again this game. Finished by Steph, gets her to 2-11 this game. So adding another 41 pins to her plus minus gets her to plus 383. So Stephanie just continuing to cruise along and looking pretty solid to make the show at this point. Oh, 
Caldwell is going to win the game with a 186 max. She almost chopped the spare. All right, game two is over, 183-158. Caldwell defeats Loker. And we have game three coming up here momentarily. So we've got Josie Ernest against Kelly Kulik. <laughs> Looks like Jody Wessner against Shannon Pluhowski coming in on the other pair.
All right, after 22 games, Stephanie Johnson at plus 383, leading by a wide margin. So we'll see Ernest at plus 288. So Stephanie with almost a 100 pin lead at this point. Kelly Kulik at plus 239, and Jackie Reese at plus 235. We've got uh, Liz Johnson in fifth. She is 15 pins back of fourth. Tania Falvo, 94 back. Diana Zavialova must have bowled a big game because now she's only 107 back. Missy Parkin, 136 pins outside of fourth. Brianna Caldwell, 140. Shannon O'Keefe, 142. And Shannon Plahowski, 151. continued to be quite low in the afternoon session. Only a handful of players plus after the first two games. Diana Zavialova plus 60 for her first two, so she's at 460. Uh, Jackie Reese at 424. Josie Ernest 414. Liz Johnson 409. I think those are the only players who are plus after two games, shows you how tough the lanes are playing. After the gutter five to start this game, Wessner through the face leaves the baby split with the sleeper. Kulik working on a double to start this game. This is a matchup of two of the best players this week. Number two versus number three currently. 
Ernest with about a let's see, 49 pin advantage on Kulik. Coming into this game, so to go ahead of her, Kelly would need to beat Josie by 20 this game. Kelly is up big. 32 pin advantage for Kelly Kulik. Cody Wessner trying to rebound after what has been a very rough start to this game. It looks like the rough start's going to continue. She misses the head pin to the right and leaves the 1 2. Kulik up 29, halfway through this game against Jos Josie Ernest. Kelly goes high on that shot, leaves the 3-6. Kelly said yesterday after she led qualifying, nine spare was a great frame on this pattern. And if you've watched this throughout the day, you would probably agree with that statement. You could go nine spare every frame and maybe toss in a double or two. You would take that every time.
Josie trying to get back in this match. She's put a double on the board. Let's cut it down to 17. Four frames to go. It's a strike here, it's down to single digits. And a little high and a 4-9 split. She pays the price on that high shot. Probably a little bit too high of a price. Because it wasn't off by that much. Westner leaves the 10 pin, even though she's had a bit of a rough start to this game. She's only down by eight. Plahowski not exactly lighting it up either. Not a single strike in that match. Kelly Kulik trying to make a run at uh, Stephanie Johnson. I'm sure Kelly would like to get that number one seed for the step ladder right now. Kelly is uh, about 100 in. 40 back uh, first with five game, with six games to be added to the standings. Kelly also battling just to stay within the number. She's only 19 pins ahead of fifth right now. And she misses. The nine pin, goodness. So instead of having the big lead, it's only 19. Both players open in the seventh frame. We finally have a strike in our other match. Jody Westner strikes in the sixth to kick off the back half of that game. Back-to-back -back opens by Kulik has opened the door for Ernest to mount the comeback in this game as Josie steps up eighth frame. Goes through the face, leaves the baby split. She makes a spare, only down by seven now. Jody a little bit light, leaves the two pin, still down by eight.
bucket for Ernest. Spare, she's down 11. Ninth frame for Kulik. She can max at 2.11 this game. This Kelly looked like she went back and regrouped and got her head straight. Rebounds after a couple of good frames. Max for Ernest is 190. So Kelly needs to fill 20 here in the 10th to shut out Josie Ernest by a pin. Kelly needs the spare and a strike on the fill for the shutout. Kelly needs a strike for the shutout. And she gets nine and a half, we'll call it. She gets 190, so Ernest can strike out for the tie. She gets all three here in the 10th frame. Josie gets the first one. Still needs two more to salvage 15 bonus pins. It's not been a great game for Jody Wessner. Gotta have it. She gets it. 
One strike away from a tie. Needs to strike for the tie and a ring 10 for Ernest. She loses 190 to 189. Kelly Kulik will pick up the 30 bonus pins, but Josie will still be ahead of her by 18 pins in the standings. Looks like we're going to have Parkin against Jasmine. As Pluhowski finishes up, pretty ugly win against Jody Wessner, 179 to 151. Game four coming up next here live on Bull TV on Extra Frame from the PWBA Detroit Open.
Underway with game four here in our match play second round. Falbo versus Liz Johnson and Parkin versus Jasmine. And updated standings after 23 games with five games to be added. Stephanie Johnson still in the lead, plus 343. Jackie Reese has moved up to second place at plus 281. Josie Ernest at plus 277. Liz Johnson at plus 274 is fourth. Kelly Kulik has now dropped out of the top four. And she is at plus 259, 15 pins back. Shannon O'Keefe, 85 back. Brianna Caldwell, 123 back. Tania Falbo, 153. Diana Zaviolova, 160 back with just five games left here in round robin match play this week in Detroit. Falbo, double to start this game. Four continue to get jumbled up each game. Right now it's Stephanie Johnson, Jackie Reese, Josie Ernest, and Liz Johnson with Kelly Kulik just 15 pins back. Johnson with the spare. She's up by six. Thank 
Summer Jasmine up big on Missy Parkin after just three frames. 22 pin advantage thanks to the double and the open by Missy. Falbo down by three sticks against Liz Johnson. Open frame for Parkin again. It's two opens in a row in that right lane. Only 54 in the fourth for Missy.
once again, our top four currently, Stephanie Johnson, Jackie Reese, Josie Ernest, and Liz Johnson. That is with this game and four more to go. Of course, game eight is our usual round robin position round. To finalize our top four for the stepladder. Elbow down by four as she steps up in the eighth. And Parkin down by 41 against Summer Jasmine. Tight game between Falbo and Johnson here this time. Still could go either way here in the ninth and the tenth frames. Jasmine with an open in the eighth. Parkin still down by 24, though. Ninth and tenth coming up here for Liz Johnson as she looks to shut out Falbo. Gets a strike. First one gets a strike in the ninth. And she can strike out for 214. Falbo. 
best she can shoot 198. Two oh one for Liz Johnson. She gets enough for the shutout against Falbo. Ja Summer Jasmine up by twenty four on Missy Parkin. Looks like Summer's on her way to the win this game.
we've got Josie Ernest against Shannon O'Keefe. We've got Shannon Plahowski against Jackie Reese. Game five, games five, six, and seven left before we have a break for the tabulation of the scores for the position round. Keith trips out the four for the double. Updated standings after 24 games. Stephanie Johnson at plus 343, still in the lead. Liz Johnson at plus 305, moves up to second. Jackie Reese at plus 263, and Kelly Kulik is fourth at plus 250. Shannon O'Keefe now just 27 pins back. Josie Ernest, 42 back. Brianna Caldwell, 85 back. Zavielova, 119 pins back of fourth place with four games left.
O'Keefe trying to stay perfect this game. She looks like she's pretty dialed in. Front three for Shannon O'Keefe, and it seems like she's made a big move. Going three and one in her matches this afternoon. To get to plus 223, which is 27 off the show currently. Keith gives the 10 pin a little nudge, but it doesn't go down. Ends her run of strikes, but she still has a 33 pin lead with the spare after three and a half frames. Reese looking for a double. She'll take a couple of ugly strikes for a double. Reese down by 10 against Pulhowski. Double for Shannon Bluhowski. Like Ernest was going to give that a run. Ends up being an open. Wachowski open in the fifth. She misses the makeable spare. O'Keefe trying to make the spare, and she covers it up. Thank you. 
O'Keefe. Pretty good first half to the game. Triple nine, spare nine, spare. A little high on that one, leaves the four pin. She is still up by a pretty significant number though. 43 pin lead for Shannon O'Keefe against Josie Ernest this game. It's been a little bit of a rough game for Jackie Reese, but that was her best shot of the game so far. She trails by 23 against Pluhowski. Pretty tough to find doubles out there today. Shannon Plahowski has struggled putting strikes together, as have many of the players here in this PWBA Detroit Open on the tough pattern. have a few games to go before we know our finalists for tonight for the stepladder which will start in about three hours games after this before the position round. The position round will finalize our final four for tonight. The struggles continue for Jackie Reese. She's going to be in jeopardy of dropping out of the top four at the rate she's going this game. Keith tossed that one away right. And that's a lot of seven on that shot.
Ernest covers up the spare. It's down by 43. Blahowski up by 34 currently. Believe it or not, Jackie Reese still has a chance to win this game. She gets the double. She can strike out for 188. Force Blowski to get all three for 189. Jackie really needed that one to carry to have a chance to win this game. She's only going to be at 167 as a max. Uh, so Keefe leaves a wobbling nine pin. Keith misses the single pin. She will win the game, but gives away some pins there in the 10th frame, shooting 204. So she'll go plus 34 this game. Certainly will move her ahead of Jackie Reese. In the standings, we'll have to wait and see how everything else shakes out. Josie with an open in the 10th as well. 
204 to 162. Shannon O'Keefe wins. And Plahowski is going to win against Jackie Reese. Plahowski going to be about 179 with a strike. Reese had 166. Game six coming up here at the PWBA Detroit Open. All right, game number six. We've got Heather Melvin against Tania Falbo. It looks like Diana Zavialova against Missy Parkin. We're still waiting for Missy to make her way down here. Looks like she's on her way right now. I'm sure she just finished up her last game.
can hear the uh, fighter jets flying above us here at Super Bowl. There's an air, air show going on down the road in Ypsilanti. So you can hear the jets flying above, inside. Every once in a while, Diana looked across at the other bowlers and said, what was that? Don't think you'll be able to hear that over the live streaming, though. It's a, kind of a rumble throughout the bowling center when that happens. As you would know, if you've ever heard a fighter jet flying right over top of you. We have updated standings, and our top four have been jumbled up again a little bit. Stephanie Johnson still in the lead at plus 356. Liz Johnson, 5-0 and this afternoon, has moved up to second. I think she was in second, but she's only eight pins behind John Stephanie Johnson now. Third place, Shannon O'Keefe now in the top four for the first time at plus 257. Kelly Kulik is fourth at plus 232. Jackie Reese just outside the number three pins back of fourth. Josie Ernest 62 back. Rihanna Caldwell 64. Diana Zavialova 76 pins back. Everybody else almost 160 or more outside of fourth place. Including Tania Falbo who way up there during qualifying, but has not had a very good day today. And Tania sitting down in 11th place, 171 pins off the show currently, with just three games to go. Thank <laughs> you. 
third frame for Missy Parkin. A lot of nine spares in that match. For the first time we have a we'll have a frame without nine spares. Missy gets seven. Trails by two against Diana. Other match, Falbo shooting a 10 pin here, trailing against Heather Melvin. By 24 pins at the halfway point. shot by Parkin is a strike in the fourth frame. Sorry, I got distracted there. Nice strike by Parkin in the fourth frame. Another one of those fighter jets just flew past over top of us. It was pretty close to the bowling center, too. Melvin with the 6-10. Still up by 20-some pins. Zavialova has made a good run this afternoon to get back in the mix to make the top four potentially. She's gone four and one. And she has the second highest score today of anybody in this afternoon block. She is plus 28 for a scratch total. Only Liz Johnson is better at plus 47. Shannon will keep it plus 26 in terms of scratch total this afternoon. Parkin working on a double. She has taken the lead. Another strike, three in a row for Missy Parkin. 
puts her up by 30. Game six in our afternoon block. We have one more game after this before we have our position round. As we are inching closer, just two and a half games away from knowing our finalists for the step ladder finals tonight at 6.30 p.m. Eastern time. Diana trips out the four for the double. Cuts the lead to 20. Three and a half frames to go against Missy Parkin. Melvin leads Falbo by one pin with two frames to go. Double from Melvin increases the lead to 11.
Another strike for Diana, three in a row. She is uh, in the lead now by four pin, by five pins against Parkin. This is a big game for Diana. She is trying to mount the big comeback to make it into the top four this week. She still has a chance to get there. You can see Stephanie Johnson bold Kelly Kulik this game. And Stephanie beat her easily. Stephanie can shoot 246. She's throwing her second shot in the 10th. And it looks like uh, Kelly shot around 188, something like that. So this game would be a big opportunity for some of the players to make up some ground on Kelly Kulik, who is in fourth place. As Kelly goes under for the game and loses. For example, Diana 76 pins back of Kelly. Diana strikes out and wins this game, let's say. Which is not a not a gimme because Missy Parkin can actually shut her out, but Diana would go 215, go 45 over. She'd only be about 20 pins back of Kelly going in the last two games. Here's Missy Parkin. Gets the strike. Missy can shoot 221 this game. Missy crossing over, does not carry the Brooklyn, leaves the nine pin. Looks like uh, Shannon O'Keefe shot in the 160s last game. She will be coming to our featured pairs next. Missy Parkin ends up at 199, so Diana needs a mark to beat that. But I can assure you that Diana is thinking nothing other than getting a double. the strike. Zavialova can make up a lot of ground this game. A lot of the bowlers above her did not bowl great this last game. Diana can be within 20, 30 pins of them with two games to go. She can get another couple of strikes here.
Yikes. Cross is over, leaves the five. So 205 for Diana. Put her at plus 35 for the game and move her to plus 191. Gonna have Shannon O'Keefe against Liz Johnson. Summer Jasmine against Jackie Reese on our left pair. Liz Johnson against Shannon O'Keefe on the right. We have got uh, this to game and one more to go to finalize our stepladder field for tonight. Liz Johnson with a double. I'm waiting on the updated standings to come in, but according to the scoreboard, Liz at plus 367 and working on a triple this game. Should get the updated standings coming in here in just a moment. No 
O'Keefe comes up with a split on that shot. Kind of a strange split for 8 10. Somewhat makeable, though. It's Jackie trips out the four for the double to start this game. So the split for O'Keefe, if you can hit the left side of the four pin, let it ricochet off that eight pin, got a pretty good chance to make this one. Let's see if she gives it a run here. Just does miss it to the left. She went for it for sure. All right, updated standings. Stephanie Johnson at plus 422 almost certainly will make the show. Liz Johnson at plus 367. She's also looking very solid to make the show. Shannon O'Keefe is currently third at plus 221. Kelly Kulik is fourth at plus 220. Very close. Brianna Caldwell suddenly in fifth at just 18 pins back of fourth. Diana Zavialova, we watched her last game. She is now just 29 pins off the show. Jackie Reese is only 40 back. Josie Ernest, just 65 pins back going into the last two games. An interesting finish this afternoon. If it stays as close as it is right now, that's going to be a very interesting position route to close things out today. So Liz Johnson has the front four. Maybe interesting to see who's going to be the top seed and just who's going to make the Step ladder because one and two looking pretty solid. Three and four on shaky ground with two games to go. And you got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six players battling for two spots right now with two games to go. If you assume that the Johnsons are both in. Front five for Liz Johnson. She is just destroying the pocket right now. Important game for Jackie Reese. Currently outside the number by 40. She starts with three in a row. Isn't it incredible how they find a way to turn it up a notch and start throwing some strikes when they need it? Towards the end of a block on a very hard pattern. Keep with a great shot. Big strike for Reese as she has the front four. Strikes are flowing right now for Reese and Johnson. Keep grabbing a handful of that one. She pulled up on it. Left the 3, 4, 6, 7, 10 split. Doesn't lose any count because she's on a strike, but it's a big, nasty split to try to make. Makeable, but difficult nonetheless.
Now the front six for Liz Johnson, halfway home. So we're going to see Liz Johnson on the show tonight for sure. Most likely Stephanie Johnson as well. Two of our top five in the points. Got away from Liz a little bit, leaves the 10 pin. Ends the run of strikes, but a good start to this game. And she really, that six bagger helps to put some distance between her and that cut number. She already had a pretty good, pretty good cushion, 165 pins. But a six bagger like that adds another 50 or 60 to that pretty quick. She'll be a couple hundred over the number going into the final game, it looks like. Keefe is not going to win this game, but she can still strike out for 208, which would be a really huge save if she could find a way to do that. That's, that's asking a lot. On this tough pattern, Jackie Reese high leaves the four pin. A big couple of frames coming up for Shannon O'Keefe. I don't know how she's in third place, but it's very close. She's got four players within 40 pins of her, basically. O'Keefe really needs to find a way to strike out here in the ninth and the tenth to get to 208 this game. Take her lumps on the loss, but still go into plus territory for the game. It would be big. Jackie Reese gets the nine to fall for the strike. She is one of those players chasing O'Keefe. And 
Shannon unable to get another strike, leaves the 3-6. It's going to drop her max score down into the 180s. 186 to be exact. Shannon's new max score. So she will continue to go the wrong direction again this game. Reese does not get the seven pin to fall. Split in the 10th for O'Keefe. And it looks like she will be in the 160s again. Her odds of making the finals tonight decreasing by the moment. The rate things are going. Oh, she makes the split, though. 4-10. I'll get her to 174. Seventy-two for O'Keefe, but it is another disappointing game for Shannon down the stretch here. Strike for Jackie. Puts her in the 230s. She still has room to get to 248. And a nice game by Liz Johnson, 247. That is a massive game today on this pattern. with a nine pin. She's going to be at 237 and a win. So she will pick up 67 pins this game. That will help her cause greatly. That's going to push her to plus 247. And I would guess move her into the top four again. So we'll be taking a break here for a little bit. 
probably about 10 minutes or so while they finalize the scores. And then they'll get five minutes of practice and then we'll start game eight. Don't forget our stepladder coming up at 6.30 p.m. Eastern time, about two hours and 10 minutes from now. And we've got one more game to go here in our Round Robin match play. So stand by and we'll be back in a little bit once we get started with game eight here live at the PWBA Detroit Open on Bowl TV on Extra Frame. That wraps up game seven. There's some great competition out there for the ladies. It's going to be very tight here to see who our top four will be for the stepladder finals. We're going to put these in order. We'll come back out for round robin game number eight. Take a small break here.
If we can have all match play finals, please report to the locker room for roll call. Match play finals, quick roll call in the locker room at the
this time. One final game coming up. He hadn't told you yet. <laughs> Fans, let me set the stage here a little bit. Our number one and number two qualifiers right now, Liz Johnson and Stephanie Johnson, are going to square off up on lanes 37 and 38. We're only six pins apart. Liz holds the lead there. The winner of that match will be our tournament leader. In the third and fourth position, on lanes 39 and 40, Kelly Kulik and Jackie Reese. The winner of that match will probably be our number three qualifier, more than likely. However, on lanes 31 and 32, Diana Zabulova and Josie Ernest. They're only 24 and 44 pins out of the show, respectively. And then if we get down into 7th uh, and 8th place, Shannon O'Keefe and Brandon Caldwell, 44, uh, 54 and 67 pins back. 
this is going to be exciting. It's essentially four players looking, five players looking for one spot on that on that step ladder finals. Some exciting stuff. Grab a chair, head down there if you like. As soon as we get our bowlers in position and we get the lanes on, you'll have them for five minutes of practice, bowlers.
Oh, please, no more deliveries if you want to go to practice. Get you going into a round robin game right here. All right, our final game of round robin match play. Getting ready to get started. Game eight of eight in this round. This will be the game that finalizes our top four for the stepladder finals, starting in about an hour and 45 minutes. Match on the left side of your screen. Liz Johnson against Stephanie Johnson. So we've got Liz Johnson against Stephanie Johnson. Liz at plus 444, Stephanie at plus 436. So that'll be our battle for the top seed this week. Kelly Kulig sitting at plus 259 and Jackie Reese at plus 247. They're bowling each other in this position round game. So just a 12 pin difference between those two. Diana Zavialova, 24 pins outside of the show right now. Josie Ernest, 44. Shannon O'Keefe, 54. And Brianna Caldwell, 67. So we've got basically six players going for two spots on the show in this game. Just eight pins separating the Johnsons and our top seed match. So basically, whoever wins this game between those two will get the top seed. Our number three and number four seeds are far from set. Like I said, we've got six players going for the two slots. So Diana Zafialova bowling Josie Ernest and Shannon O'Keefe bowling Brianna Caldwell this game. Liz with a 7-10 split in the second. Yeah, 
You have to like the chances of whoever wins the Kulik Reese match to make the show. Assuming they bowl on par with what they've shot throughout the tournament. Liz gets the pin book up on the deck, but doesn't get out to 10, though. Diana Zavialova starting with an open frame. She trails Josie Ernest by 11. There's Kelly Kulik. Rings a 10 pin. Since Kelly and Jackie are within 12 pins of each other, whoever wins the game will be ahead of the other, regardless of the score. But the key for those two is to try to bowl well enough to stay ahead of the challengers coming up in the five, six, seven, eight spots. Stephanie trying to keep her start perfect. Got a double to begin this game. And turns it into a triple. So look at Diana Zavialova, who just went high, left a three pin. We've got our Bull TV mobile cam parked down there behind that pair. manages to get the 10 out that time. A couple of spares and a strike to start for Kulik. Johnson keeps the perfect start alive, Art. PWBA Tour points leader Stephanie Johnson with the front four. And she is currently in good shape. Trying to earn the top seed this week for the stepladder finals. Looking to win her second title of the season. O'Keefe and Caldwell both off to slow starts. Liz Johnson. Looking for a double. She gets it. Josie Ernest just tossed a double after starting with a spare. quickly take a look at Josie Ernest spare double to start this game and another strike for Josie as she is starting to make her move here bucket for Reese Josie Ernest 44 pins back of fourth so 44 behind Jackie Reese coming into this game and Josie is 56 behind Kelly Kulik. Open frame for Reese. No doubles between O'Keefe and Caldwell in this game yet. And they are through four frames. So they're not really showing any signs yet making a run at this thing. Stephanie Johnson, front four, stepping up, fifth frame. Fast eight, leaves the four seven.
Stephanie up 31 with the spare at the halfway point of the game. Shaping up to be a very interesting finish here. Sure seems like Josie Ernest is the one who wants to spoil the party for the top four. Shannon O'Keefe has a double now. Kelly Kulik was working on a double. It was a bad shot, leaves the 4-7. Josie Ernest is getting ready to step up. We're going to flip over to our full TV mobile cam. Josie, spare triple to start this game. Diana, by the way, one open, no doubles through five. There's Josie. Goes high, leaves the single pin. She'll be staring down the spare. situations like this it's quite likely that somebody could jump in from the five six seven or eight spot more likely from the five or six spot Jackie Reese struggling a bit here after coming out of the gates with a double she's got to be careful she could get herself in some trouble Shannon O'Keefe had three strikes in a row but just left a four pin Liz Johnson down 30. After she throws this, we're going to quickly go over to Josie, who is up now and just went high flush for the strike. Ended right now, Jackie Reese would be out. 
and Josie Ernest would be in, but there's a lot of game left. A lot of variables can change that situation. Let's look at Diana Zavulova. Tosses a double. First double of the game. Double for Stephanie. She's up by 40 now. And it looks like she might be on her way to our number one seed this week. Josie Ernest just tossed a double. Things shaping up well for Josie Ernest so far down the stretch. Kelly gets the seven out for the double. She's up by 26 against Reese. Got an important shot coming up for Josie Ernest here. So we're gonna go over to that. As this is a more critical shot than Liz's. Josie looking for a third consecutive strike and the 10 goes late for the strike. Three in a row for Ernest. Reese comes up light, 2-4-5. Hope's fading for her quickly here. Liz strips out the four for the strike in the ninth. Stephanie Johnson still up big, however. Diana Zavilova was working on a double, just went 3 6 10. Show it to you. Stephanie Johnson, ninth and 10th, coming up for her. She looks to lock this thing up. Just needs to beat Liz Johnson this game for the top seed. Good shot. Looks like Stephanie's going to be our number one seed this week. Three in a row for Steph. It's going at a 237 pace, and Liz Johnson can only max at 227. Split for Jackie Reese. She is in big time trouble. Critical shot coming up for Josie Ernest in a minute. And we will show that to you. That strike locks up the number one seed for Stephanie Johnson tonight. And here is Josie Ernest. And a 10 pin. going at a 238 pace it would be enough to win the game and almost certainly enough to make the show Kelly Kulik working on a double. Comes up a little light, leaves the two pin. Let's 
see any scenarios where both Kelly and Jackie get get passed. I think Kelly is likely going to make it. Stephanie for sure is our top seed. 256 in the last game. Josie left a single pin in the 10th. So spare, she'll be at 237 with a strike on the fill. She's going to win the game. We know that Diana Zavialova will not make the show. We can start to rule some people out. Brianna Caldwell had 196, it looks like. So she is not going to make the show for sure. Shannon O'Keefe just split in the 10th. She's out. So it looks like it's uh, most likely going to be Stephanie Johnson, Liz Johnson, Kelly Kulik, and Josie Ernest. Final shot for Josie. It's uh, eight, but Josie Ernest finishes with 235 in the win. Thank you. All right, 198, Shannon O'Keefe, 196, Brianna Caldwell. Is not going to be enough for either of them as Josie Ernest got to plus 268. Jackie Reese. Messenger comes across for the strike. She can only get to 194, however. And it is just not going to be enough. For Jackie to make the show. Nice finish for Jackie, but she can only get to two, plus 241. And that would miss by 17. No, oh, sorry, 20, 27. So the only way that Jackie gets in is if somehow Kelly Kulik has a disastrous final frame here. Four for Jackie. A five count on the first ball is enough for Kulik to lock up the win. She gets nine. That'll be enough for Kelly.
All right, so your top four for the show going to be Stephanie Johnson, Liz Johnson, Kelly Kulik, and Josie Ernest. Going to be your top four for our finals this evening. And we'll have the introductions coming up in just a minute. Stand by. In search of her first PWA title, please welcome Josie Ernest. Her opponent in that opening match, making back-to-back -back championship round appearances, five PWA titles, five majors, the prestigious PBA Tournament of Champions. Please welcome Kelly Kulik. Okay, the winner of that match will go on to face our number two seed tonight. She captured the season opening USBC Queens Championship. Nine titles in all five majors. Please welcome Liz Johnson. And the winner of that match will go on to face our number one seed. She captured the PWBA Wichita Open earlier this year, looking to solidify her bid on Player of the Year honors. Please welcome Stephanie Johnson. <laughs> all right, bowling fans, that is your top four for tonight's Step Ladder Finals. One more round of applause for all four of our bowlers. Congratulations, ladies, a great ball tonight. All right, we will have to take a break. We're gonna rearrange some furniture and then we'll come back out for the Step Ladder Finals at 6.30. 